Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, am I clear? Waalaikumsalam, Madam. Waalaikumsalam. Okay, Madam. So now we have about 26 students. I believe that um, these are from section 3 mostly. Do you have any other students from other section? Tadi eh? Alright. Yes. Today we are going to look into new topic. Remember last time where we did we stop in the, in the last class? Hmm. Last kali belajar apa? ITA punya ITA. tutorial. No oh, settle. InsyaAllah. Huh? Alright. So today we go into the new topic. But if you want to look at the course outline. Uh, where do I put the course outline? It's not supported lah pula. Eh? Cannot lah my course outline. Hold on ya. Yeah. Let me check. Hold on. Uh, let's see where we are now. Uh, which week are we now? Do you know? Anyone? Hey. Okay, we... Uh, 10 code maybe. Apa? 10? But, uh, okay, we have covered our investment incentive. Right? Mm. It's just that for reinvestment allowance, all right, I remember that I have not covered that. Have I? Reinvestment allowance, but um, uh, you uh, because why I'm not covering reinvestment allowance because the tax computation for reinvestment allowance is similar to investment tax allowance, right? So whereby you are given sixty percent, uh, seventy percent of your SI set off against sixty percent of your qualifying capex, all right? So that is your uh, reinvestment allowance. It's just that the, the the criteria for you to apply for reinvestment allowance is different from investment tax allowance, right? So later you look at the reinvestment allowance, the topic is more on the modernization, all right, for you to automation your machine, everything. So that one you can apply for reinvestment allowance. So the competition is similar to ITA, it's just that the criteria is different. And the tax relief period for RA or reinvestment allowance is 15 years, one five, yeah? So you're given 15 years period for you to have a tax relief period, right? So that is under reinvestment allowance, right? So uh, we are going to look into your withholding tax and double tax agreement this week, all right? But it's just that I want to check with you, real property gains tax, RPGT. We have covered this, right? Not all. Why not all? Huh. I thought we have covered this during the uh, online week. The one that I gave you the YouTube for the first time. Oh, not first time lah. Second time lah kot. Oh, not all maknanya kat mana? I think dekat ujung-ujung kot I tak cover lagi, isn't it? So by right, uh -huh. this RPGT, we already have the YouTube link. So you can always refer to the YouTube link. And maybe in this week, I will just, um, uh, we are going to have a review only on the RPGT, right? So before we go into this topic, make sure that you have watched the, the video on RPGT. And then we also have indirect taxes. And this one, we, I will be using Dr. Salwa's recorded lecture, all right, on this topic, indirect taxes. So now you only have uh, withholding tax and double tax agreement to be covered right before we review our RPGT. So if you are in week 10, then it means that we are on the right track. Yeah. So let's look into withholding tax and I have just included the chapter in the Google Classroom. Yeah, withholding tax 24. And we also have the double tax agreement in the scan chapter in the Google Classroom. Yeah, you can refer to that later. So there are two chapters, one is withholding tax, the other one is double tax agreement or we call it as a DTA. Okay, so most likely the question on this double tax agreement is the theoretical part and the withholding tax, it could be both theoretical and uh, some computation, but it's very, very minimal uh, computation. Yeah, most likely it will be on the uh, theory. Okay, why is a withholding tax? 
all right? Just like the name, right? It's a kind of tax that someone hold, all right? You withhold the tax. So what it means is that you're talking about uh, when a person, all right, we have a payer here, right, who is actually a payer, all right, make payment to a non-resident person, right? A payer make a payment to a non-resident person. And to this non-resident person, the amount received from the payer is an income, isn't it? Let me type that. Free tax. Here is income to the person, yeah? Um, but to the payer, right, it's going to be an expenses, isn't it? To the payer, the payment made to the, is an expense. So it means that, all right, you have to understand that for this, to the payer, whatever payment made to the non-resident will appear in your profit and loss account, okay? To the non-resident, the amount received from the payer is an income to the person, all right? And how do you decide whether a person is a resident or non-resident? Huh. For an individual, how you decide on that? Anyone? Based on residential status. Based on? Nah, think it. That's why. Resident status. Ah, yeah, resident. How do you decide on the resident status for an individual? How long the person stay in Malaysia? Yeah, the number of days the individual is in Malaysia, right? And the at the seven one A B C N and D, right? So once a person is a resident then there's no issue of withholding tax. But once a person is a non-resident person, either a company or it could be an individual. So if an individual, the non-resident, is the resident status is based on the number of days in Malaysia. What about resident status of a company? How you decide on that? No. Pernah dengar tak? Resident status of a company that is in chapter 8 of your textbook, all right? So in general company, the, the, the resident status is based on the management and control of the company. So if the management and control of the company is in Malaysia, then the company is a Malaysian resident. But if it's outside Malaysia, then it's a non-resident company. And remember, when you want to apply for any tax incentive, you want to apply for pioneer status, IPA, or any other kind of tax incentive, company must be a resident company yeah so uh, for, for company is i would say it's easier because they're looking at the management and control what do you mean by management and control right of course the law does not actually uh, give the definition for management and control but normally we look at the board of directors meeting all right if the board meeting is in malaysia then they can say that management control is in malaysia sometimes we look at the annual general meeting is held in malaysia or any major decision is made in a meeting which is held in Malaysia. So with that, the company is a Malaysia resident company. But the company, once a company is a Malaysia resident company, all right, this year, then next year, you don't have to prove anymore. So once you are resident, you are assumed to be a resident company uh, unless, all right, uh, unless otherwise stated. Right? So you don't have to prove yourself that you are a resident company every year. Not like an individual, you have to look at which each year of assessment, resident or resident, non-resident, resident, right? So company is a different, right? So you just have to make sure that you have a management control in Malaysia that you're a Malaysia resident company. So coming back to the topic, withholding tax is only one payment made to a non-resident. Either the non-resident is an individual or it could also be a company. Again, to the non-resident, it has an income, to the payer, the payment is an expense which appear in your profit and loss account. All right. So when you say that uh, uh, withholding tax, when a payment, all right, it's not all payment. All right, certain type of payment made to a non-resident person subject to withholding tax. So when we say subject to withholding tax, it means that the payer make payment. All right. But for example, let's say that a payment of royalty to a non-resident person. So you have to pay 100,000 ringgit. 
Yeah, payment to now resident hundred thousand ringgit. So the law states that because the 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 recipient in this case the non resident person, so you have to withhold tax ten percent. So when you say withhold tax, it means that you have to hold the tax ten percent. So what you have to make payment to the non resident is only ninety percent of that, right? Even the total royalty amount is hundred thousand, but you only have to pay ninety thousand to non resident. The ten percent is the tax portion, which is actually payer withhold. But it does not belong to him. But you have to pay the pay. You have to pay the tax withholding tax the ten percent, or in this case the ten thousand ringgit to inland revenue board, right? So you have to pay that amount to RB within thirty days, right? So in hence here you say that the payer is um appointed as a agent for the inland revenue board, right? It means that you collect tax on behalf of the uh, government. Right? Why we have to withhold that? Because remember that if you're talking about an individual who is a non-resident, means that he's not in Malaysia most of the time. So in order for us to collect tax on the income received by him, then we have to apply withholding tax provision. Is that clear? Right. So now we say that any payment made to a non-resident person, you have to withhold tax, and the withholding tax has to be paid to the tax authority within 30 days, right? So what kind of income which is subject to withholding tax, right? So we call it as a scope of withholding tax. It means that only this type of income we see by a non-resident person subject to withholding tax. In other words, if a, pay, a company make payment, all right, expenses in the form of special classes of income, payment of interest, all right, payment of royalty, payment of contract payment, all right, uh, payment for public entertainer and other income under section 4F, and the recipient for all these payments are non-resident person, all right, then you have to withhold that. Yeah, so you have to apply the withholding tax. It means that whatever payment which is supposed to pay, then you have to withhold 10% or depending on the tax rate, yeah. And the amount that you will hold, you have to pay to RB within 30 days. Right. So the law says that the non-resident, right, would only be liable for withholding tax. So this one we talk about the kind of the type of income which is subject to uh, withholding tax. Right. Only two. Okay. All right. These are the types of income which is subject to withholding tax. But is everyone, is all non-resident uh, liable? Depends. Only if all of the following. See, number one, of course, he is a non-resident person. So if he is not a non-resident, then not subject to withholding tax, right? So you have to check whether the person is resident or non-resident person. Number two, the income has to be one of the category stated. So it means that it has to be only this kind of income. All right, we have section 4A. So later we look at the definition. Income under section 4, big A, all right, interest income, royalty income, all this type of income. And income need to be deemed derived in Malaysia. It's very important, yeah. If the income is not derived in Malaysia, even though it falls into this scope, all right, but you have to check is the income derived in Malaysia. If it's not derived in Malaysia, it means that you don't have to pay withholding tax, right. And the income is not attributable to a business carried on by the business by the non-resident in Malaysia. All right, in this case, you are talking about if the business is actually, how I say, uh, okay, let's say uh, you're talking about interest, yeah, interest under section 4C. But interest income could also be interest uh, income under section 4A if the business of that person is lending of money. You get that? For example, banking interest is section 4A. So uh, the income, the interest that received by the person must be section 4C and not section 4A. And the income is not exempted by schedule C of the act or double tax agreement. So later we see that double tax agreement, what does it mean by that? Between Malaysia and the non-resident home country or the treaty country. Sorry, yeah. So you have to check whether you have all this income and then whether you have fulfilled the Requirement here, then only you have to withhold that. Yeah. Okay. How much to withhold depending on the types of 
income. Yeah. So here we say that uh, number one is that we talk about special class of income. The rate is ten percent. So if you say that hundred thousand payment to a non-resident person, you have to withhold ten percent of that, which is ten thousand ringgit. All right. Or if the interest is fifteen percent, contract uh, royalty is ten percent. Contract payment is 10 plus 3%. So it's a bit different, right? At 10% plus 3%. Later, we look at what do you mean by 10 and 3. We have public entertainers, all right? And then you also have other income under section 4F is 10%. Okay, other than contract payment, that's why it's here, here is 10 plus 3, all right? Other than that, it's a final tax. It means that once you have you hold the amount tax, right? The non-resident don't have to pay any more tax on the same income. So that's why we say that it's a final tax. So you cannot tax them twice on the same income. Non resident need not account for further Malaysian tax once the withholding tax has been complied with. Yeah, so you don't have to pay more. Lah. Okay. Then you have to look at okay, for this topic, all right, what you want to know is that um what do you want to know is that all right for the resident status. Oh, sorry. So well, for withholding tax, right? Number one, you know that uh, you have to understand the concept. Yeah. What do you mean by concept? It means that you have to understand that it's a person paid to another another person, non-resident person, right? And payment, then you have to inland revenue bond. Okay, you have to withhold. So it means that if the ten percent, then you have to pay ninety percent to the non-resident person, and the balance you have to pay to RIP. All right. So when we talk about compliance under withholding tax, number one is that, what do you mean by compliance here? Number one is that you have to withhold tax. And then number two, you have to pay within 30 days. All right. What happened is that, remember that payment to a non-resident person is a lot. Yeah, you don't pay or sometimes um, to an expatriate, for example, for the management fees, for the consultation. So you pay a lot to a non-resident person, especially uh, we call it as an expatriate. Yeah. Some of these expatriate, most of them are non-resident person. So when payment made to them, all right, you have to withhold tax. So some company do actually withhold tax, but they fail to pay to RIB within 30 days. So if you do not comply any one of these, all right, or both, then you are non-compliant. Okay. So then under this topic, right, you also need to know the scope, right? The scope of income subject to withholding tax. Number three, you have to know what is the uh, criteria of the non-resident person. D is what is the rate. For each income is a different rate, then you have to know how much is the rate for each type of income. And then what else? You need to know what if, right? E is that what if you, of course, for each side, uh, type of income, you have to know the definition. All right, what do you mean by uh, royalty? How do you know that royalty is subject to RB? Then you have to look at the definition. All right, what do you mean by contract payment? Who are public entertainers? All right, so all these things, uh, the definition is very important because if it does not fall into the definition, then it will not be subject to the withholding tax. Why? Because the scope, all right, may not fall into the criteria. So what if, what happens if you do not comply? Right. What are the, uh, the, uh, what do you call that? The consequence of non-compliance to the withholding tax. Right. So you have to look at this number one and number two later we look into that non-compliance of withholding tax. And then uh, of course you have to look at. Uh, remember just now the criteria here. The most, uh, the one that you really have to go into because. Of course, number one is that the, the individual must be a resident. So you have to check the resident status. But what you most students have problem is to identify the derivation. Whether the income is deemed derived in Malaysia. So some, you have to check whether the income derived in Malaysia, yes or no. If yes, then only you subject to withholding tax. So sometimes the question is on the derivation. All right? And the implication of non-compliant. Volume macam slow. Uh, I punya dah maksimum. 
Anyone else has problem with the volume? Tadaya, so I have to continue. <sighs> I hope I'm not on mute. Okay. Okay, let's go back to the textbook. We have all right, the rate here. All right, so you have to know for each type. So if you were to do a summary of this topic, all right, what you can do is you can do that in a column or a table form. All right, you have the type of income. I would say that the type of income is this. All right, you have the special classes of income, interest, royalty, contract payment, public entertainers, sepanjang. All right, and then what you want to know is that, of course, what is the rate? And then... What is the derivation for each type of income? What is the rate for each type of income? What is the derivation for each type of income? Right, it will be different. Or we one may have one another column for the definition. So it depends how you know what upper uh, income on the on the column or on the row side depends. It's up to you, right? But if you can do do a summary, all right, of this topic into a column form or in table, it will be very easy for you. Yeah. Okay, so what is a contract payment? Effective from 2002, the total marine tax for contract is 10 plus 3. The 10% we have is for the non-resident contractors, right? While the 3% is the tax of the employee. So that's, that's why the 10 plus 3%. So that's for contract payment. Contract payment means that looking at the construction cost or like whenever there's a contract between a person with to the another person, Right, so the contract payment. So contract to 10% is on the company, 3% is on the employees of the company who are non-resident person. Right, so the 10 plus 3%. The non-resident contractor is said to be carrying on business in Malaysia. He would submit tax computation in the normal manner in determining the charge by income, income tax payable would be computed. The non-resident contractor would then be allowed to set off 10% withholding tax. So in this case, Contract payment is a bit different from others. So because that's why they say that other than contract payment, everything is final. But here, all right, contract payment means that the company will have to submit their income tax return because they are assumed to have a business in Malaysia. So that is different. Contract payment is lain sikit, right? So you, you have to submit income tax returns, then you have to compute your chargeable income, then you compute your tax liability. And remember that whatever payment you receive as a non-resident on the contract payment, 10% has been deducted by the payer, right? So the amount of 10% deducted, all right, is actually the tax paid by you on the contract payment. So now remember that when you submit your income tax returns, this contract payment is your income, which 10% has been deducted at source, right? Because why the payer have actually withhold 10% of the payment. But when you report, you have to report gross income. So then you have your gross income, compute a chargeable income. Yeah, gross income can minus allowable expenses to get adjusted income, statutory income, your aggregate income, everything. Then you dapat your chargeable income times by 28%. Oh, uh, sorry, times by 24%. Once you have your tax liability, then you minus your 10% tax. Because why? From this total tax liability 24%, you have actually paid 10%. Right, 10% has been actually withhold by the person, by the payer, right? So that's why the 10% is given as a set off or as a deduction, right? Set off against your income tax payable. Okay, let's say uh, the example here for non-resident contractor, right? You have section 4A from your construction business. So remember that, uh, remember that the construction business here is a contract payment. So when you receive the gross income, gross income here actually is the 90% 90, uh, 90 only. Right? For example, let's assume that the uh, contract payment is 100,000, but actually this company will only receive 90,000. But what appears here, right here, must be the gross amount, which is 100,000. Then minus expenses wholly exclusively incurred, your section 33, any allowable expenses. Adjust the income, capital allowance, statutory income, then minus approved donation, assuming that you don't have any other income. And if you have any approved donation, you can minus that. Okay. Then you have your chargeable income times by your 24%, which is the normal tax rate for a company, right? Then you are given section 110 set off against your tax liability. So it means that the amount that you pay here is actually 
14% of your chargeable income. Because why? Total here is at 24%. Right? 24%, but you already have paid 10%. Right? 10% have been withhold by the payer. Means that you only pay the balance 14, 14%. This is on the company, right? Okay. Another one that I have to say is that responsible of the payer, I mentioned earlier, make the payment, right, to the non-resident. So when make payment to non-resident, remember that you have to withhold tax, all right? Uh, when the payer make the payment or credit such payment to the non-resident, shall within one month. See, you say that it doesn't not 30 days, you say that one month after paying or crediting. So the word is paying or credit. It means that sometimes you only have your credit in your accounts, cash. But maybe cash is not yet. Okay, it takes some time. Maybe check the check, for example. But it's not the date that the non-resident actually received the check. But it's actually when you actually credit your accounts for the payment to the non-resident person. So that's why the term here is paying or crediting. Such payment render an account and pay the amount to in LW bond. Reholding tax is due and payable to IB on the earlier, right? Early of crediting or payment to the non-resident person, right? Uh, it's in line with legal principle, define crediting to mean amount available to or for benefit of the non-resident payee. It's not, uh, does not refer to the mere journal entry or an accrual of the liability in the account. Or in this case, public ruling says that when the money is available or, so it means that it's not the date that you, put that into a journal entry, right? So when it's available. So maybe, for example, you have put the double entry today, but the money only available because no rights person may take some time for the money to be uh, transferred, for example, right? So maybe in three days time, that then only you uh, the liability rights, yeah? Okay. okay. Remember that penalty, okay, now later we are going to look into this topic, yeah? Penalty for incorrect returns very important okay why is it we're going to look into this because whenever you have all the income right whether it's a it's four o'clock or whether the income is a royalty right or whether it's an interest if you submit an incorrect returns the penalty is the same so we're going to look into that once only lah. it's not that every topic you're going to repeat the same thing okay so later we look into the incorrect returns all right, one is for non-compliance, another one is for incorrect returns. Yeah, so with the non-compliance include incorrect returns and actually non-compliance, right? So there are two types, of one is incorrect returns and the other one is the non-compliance. Okay, all right, then you look at the royalty. Right, so all this is the definition. So if you go through, it says that, uh, what is the uh, definition say? Refer to chapter 11 of royalty. Why chapter 11? Because remember when you did your taxation one, you had the target royalty, remember? Other sources of income, you cover rental, royalty, dividend and interest. All right, so you have to refer back the definition of royalty in chapter 11. So I will not go through that. Why you need to understand the definition? Because if your payment fall into the definition, then you have to withhold tax. If not, then it's not royalty. Lah. Right? So that's why you have to understand the definition. Okay. Now we look into the derivation. So in this case, derivation, remember, deemed derived in Malaysia. Only if the royalty is derived in Malaysia, then only the income is subject to withholding tax. Okay. Number one, it says that Royalty income is deemed derived to be is deemed to be derived. Derived by whom? Huh. So actually, who actually received the income? Yeah, yeah. Huh, actually? Who actually received income? Payer or non resident? Non resident. Who actually should have to pay tax? Payer. Payer. But who actually collect tax? Hey, salah. Yeah. Like, who receive income? No resident. Who pays tax? No pay resident. Yeah. No resident should pay tax. Oh. But how you collect tax of the no resident? Yeah. Agent, agent. Agent. Siapa agent? Payer. 
How you, how you, agent collect tax? 10%. Full tax lah namanya. Tahu? Sound clear? So yeah. when you get royalty, it means that the non-resident receive royalty. Alright? And that royalty may fall into the definition. Alright, you do actually receive royalty. But if the royalty derived in Malaysia, then you have to look at the derivation punya section 15 for royalty. So the royalty income is deemed to be derived from Malaysia by the non-resident person if, right, responsibility for payment of the royalty lies with government, state government, or local authority. So if the payment is made by the government, it means that lies with too much. Then government has to make the payment. Maybe government take up an expatriate, right, to advise on the MRR project or MRT project, for example, right? Then they have to pay to the non-resident person. Or maybe it's a state government, call it uh, Selangor, katalah, right? Nak buat project, any kind of project lah, right? Then they have to make payment to non-resident person, right? Or any local authority. Local authority could be the municipal, for example. Or it could be the DBKL, for example. So any, uh, when the, uh, the payment right, lies with the government, state government or local authority, number one. Or, Responsibility for payment of the royalty in the basis year lies with a person who is a resident person. So it means that if the person is a resident, the payer is a resident person. Right? Or the royalty is charged as an outgoing and expense against any income accrued in or derived from Malaysia. The payer may not be a resident person, but payment of royalty is charged as an outgoing or expense against income. So in your profit and loss account, if you have payment of royalty to a non-resident person, even though you're a non-resident person, the payer itself is a non-resident person. All right, because if you are resident, then you point to B. But number three, if you are non-resident person, but you charge the royalty expense in your profit and loss account, right, then the royalty received by the non-resident is deemed derived in Malaysia. Do you get that? What do you mean by derivation? Right? You want to understand that the income received by the non-resident person is derived in Malaysia. If it's not derived, mean that it, is, it was not paid by the government, if the person is non-resident person and you do not charge that in your account, then you are not supposed to withhold, withhold tax. Why? Because the income is not derived in Malaysia. So you're going to look into this derivation again when you look into other type of income, right? Most likely, the derivation is the same except for interest income. Later, we look into the derivation for your interest income. Okay. The deduction of withholding tax I mentioned earlier, right? You deduct 10% depending on the type. For in this case, royalty, the tax rate is 10%. So you deduct 10% lah, right? So it means that you can only pay to the non-resident 90% of it. The 10% you withhold and then you pay to in let All right. Uh, it said that the withholding tax will not apply if the royalty income is attributable to a business carried on by the non-resident person. All right. They refer to where a non-resident branch is set up in Malaysia. So later we look at bila the branch ni, you have to decide whether the branch is the branch is a resident or non-resident company. Okay. The payer will pay the gross royalty amount to the non-resident. So in this case, because we're holding tax, does not apply. Okay, let's look at the example here. Sailor Sun System, Senjian Berhad. So bila you nampak Senjian Berhad kat sini, you boleh agak lah, company is a resident company. Alright? And you say that a company resident in Malaysia. So bila you sebut resident in Malaysia, means that it could be a payer, who is a resident. Manufactures computer for export, uh, 14 February 2019 entered into an agreement with Wise Kit Limited. Bila you nampak term Kit li uh, Limited kat sini, right? Limited, you know that it's a non-resident company. Yeah? It's a non-resident company, a foreign company for the transfer of technical know-how. Technical know-how falls under Section 4 Big A. Right? So this is under Section 4 Big A. But it may say that, okay, this one could also fall under royalty. I think it's a royalty because 
uh, this chat, uh, this topic is on royalty, right? Technical know-how and assistance. Amount of eighty thousand will be payable on ten of December two thousand nineteen to YSK Limited. Discovery holding tax requirement. Okay, is the income derived in Malaysia? Is the payer Malaysia resident? Yes. All right, and of course, I believe that the payment is eighty thousand is charged as a royalty in the account. All right, and the payment is payable in on ten of December two thousand nineteen. So this one is income into uh, expense for two thousand nineteen. All right. The recipient is a non-resident and the royalty is deemed in Malaysia because as multi-payment is live with the resident person, seller son, sendian berhad. Therefore, we're holding tax 10% will be 8,000 ringgit. Right, the 10% royalty tax rate is, uh, uh, tax rate is 10%. The amount payable to wife's kid means that it's only 72% because initially 100% is 80,000. Minus 10%, so 90,000 only, eh, sorry, 90% only paid to YSK Limited. And the withholding tax must be paid authority not later than 9 January 2020. Why 9 January? Payment is, when is the payment? 10 of December. Kenapa dia ambil 9? Betul lah, exactly 30 days. Yeah, 1 month or 30 days. 10 December means that the 30 days is 9 of January 2020. So if you pay later than that, hmm, right, then you'll be penalized. Lah. Okay, penalty for non-compliant. Why you use not? You will hold that, but you do not pay within 30 days. Using example 24.1, the amount paid to Malaysian branch of Wise Kid Limited uh, does not apply. Uh, why does not apply? As the royalty income is transferable to a business carry on in oh, is it 24 one. Okay. If the amount of royalty is paid to a Malaysian branch of Wise Kit Limited. All right. So it means that in this case, the Wise Kit Limited uh, have a branch in Malaysia. All right. And the payment is made to the Malaysian branch. Malaysian branch is a, in this case, it's a resident. All right, so because of that, all right, you don't have to withhold tax. Because why? You don't pay to a non-resident company, but you pay to a Malaysian branch. I keep on receiving this uh, lost connection. I'm not sure why. I hope that the recording continues. Uh, can you actually see it now? I received a lost connection just now. Are you still here? Yes. Yeah, tak ada, tak ada lost tadi. I keep on receiving lost yes. connection, connection. Kenapa? Hmm. Wow, what is happening? Aish, hilang, hilang. Okay. While waiting for that. Okay. Okay, so let's go for the next one. What if you do not comply? All right, non-compliance. So uh, non-compliance means that either you do not withhold tax, 
It means that you fail to withhold tax or you do withhold but you fail to uh, pay to authority within one month. Either one or both, yeah? So the penalty is 10% penalty. Okay, 10% penalty on the unpaid or outstanding withholding tax. All right. So when I say that the 10% is on the unpaid or outstanding withholding tax, so let's assume that it's 100,000. Tax rate is 10%. So it means that you have to withhold 10,000 ringgit. All right. So 10,000 ringgit means that 10% of the 10,000 is 1,000 ringgit. So the penalty is only on the 1,000 ringgit. All right. It's not on the 100,000. But it's a 10%, which is the withholding tax. So the withholding tax is 1,000. Penalty is 10% of the withholding tax. Yeah. Or, for example, uh, it could be that the withholding tax is 10,000, but you actually have made payment to RB 8,000. So the balance 2,000 is still outstanding. So the penalty is 10% of the 2,000, which is 200 ringgit. Is it? Uh, yeah. Study penalty, 10,000. Oh, sorry, you're holding tax is 10%. Which is 10,000. Penalty is 10% of that one 10,000. Then it become 1,000 lah. Okay, let's see. You have uh, royalty is 10,000. Sorry, 100,000 ringgit. Right, we're holding tax, 10% is 10,000. Penalty is 1,000, right? So in this case, uh, withholding tax is 10% of your gross. The penalty is 10% of your withholding, of your withholding tax. You can see that? All right. So, but if I say that from this 8,000, you have paid 8,000, so the balance is only 2,000 amount due. So 10% of the 2,000 is only 200 penalty, yeah? So it depends whether you have paid the payment or it's on the, the whole outstanding withholding tax. Okay. If debt due to the government shall be payable, all right, effective from 2009, the tax authority are authorized by the Act to extension of time and special circumstances to pay forthwith the withholding tax and remission on the whole or part of the penalty imposed on withholding tax provided good cause issued by the payer. Remission, yeah. So here is the example, gross royalty income is 1,000. All right, 10% withholding tax. So in this case, the royalty is 1,000. My example, royalty is 100,000. So here, royalty is only 1,000. 10% is 100. So net amount payable to non-resident is only 900,000. Right? So then the withholding tax to authority is 100. Uh, but if you fail non-compliance, the penalty is 10% of that 100. So amount due to the government is 110. Yeah, 100 is the withholding tax. 10 is the penalty on the withholding tax. Okay. The amount of royalty expense, in this case, the 1,000 will be allowed as a deduction in arriving at the adjusted income of the payer. Okay, if, money, if withholding tax and penalty were subsequently paid to director general, right? Uh, but remember that the penalty is a non-allowable expense. So why do we have this, right? Initially, the law says that, uh, let me stop here, yeah. The law says that, all right, whenever, for example, you, you have 100,000, all right, and then you do not withhold tax, or you, you either you, Withhold or whatever then, but this one is non-compliance. Understand? Whether you do not withhold or you withhold but you do not pay to RV, the tax implication is that when you do your uh, corporate income tax, yeah, the question could be like this. Payment to royal of royalty to a non-resident person, withholding tax not complied with. The law says that the whole amount of this royalty is non-allowable. You get that? If you do not comply, the whole amount of the royalty is not allowed. Okay. So it's not allowed. It means that when you do your submission, you have to add back. Lah, right? Because why the amount is not allowed. Why you not allowed? Because you do not comply with the withholding tax provision. 
but recently the law says that um the law says that if right remember that it's assuming that year end is 31st of december 2019 so you have to submit to ib 31st of july 2020 right because you have to submit uh, your form c uh, seven months after your closing so when you submit 31st of july right because this payment is made during 2019 the hundred thousand made to non-resident person so if you do not comply then auditors say that hey why do you not comply so i did not comply then you have to pay penalty you make sure that you pay the withholding tax plus the penalty to inland revenue board so you pay hundred eleven thousand to inland revenue board before submission of your tax returns if you have made payment of eleven thousand to inland revenue board before 31st of july then this whole amount is now become allowable as well. So the, the tax agent we have to advise the company right to pay all these eleven thousand before submission so that the whole hundred thousand now becomes allowable as well. So you don't have to add back. Nah. Why? Because you have made payment to inland revenue board before submission of your tax tax returns. Of course, you some pay later, of course you have to pay penalty. Nah. Okay. So that is what happened when you pay everything before submission of your tax returns. So the penalty 10%, you still have to pay. But then we also have a case where we call it as incorrect returns, right? So penalty for incorrect returns is that, remember this one, this, this not the 10% is for the non-compliance. This one is for incorrect returns. So what is an incorrect returns? Incorrect returns is written that you submit incorrectly. Right? It means that you're acting from 2011. The withholding tax plus any late payment penalty must be paid to the government prior to the submission of tax returns. I mentioned that it means that you have to submit before. You have to make payment before 31st of July. Failing which, the tax authority may impose penalty under section 1132. Right? 1132 namanya incorrect returns. Alright, submitted by the penalty. The penalty is 100% of the tax under charge. Alright, what do you mean by incorrect returns? You submit your return form. Remember that you have, for example, alright, in this case, uh, example just now, you have to pay RB 11,000 again, 10,000 plus 1,000, but you did not pay to RB before 31st of July. But you claim that 100,000 royalty as allowable expense. Mark, ah? So, bila you claim that as allowable expense, is wrong. Ah? So, the return that you submit is incorrect. Why? Because that 100,000 should not be allowable expense. Why is it not allowable expense? Because you have not settled your withholding tax in provision. You did not pay the 10 plus 1,000. Right? And then you claim your income, your return form, you claim your royalty as allowable expense. So the return is incorrect. Lah. So the penalty for incorrect returns is 100% of the tax under charge. So what do you mean by tax under charge? So let's look at the example here. Ranjung, Ranjung Dodge. Right? Senjian Berhad, close account to 31st of December. 2019, the due date to submit return form is 31st of July, 2020. The company paid royalty to Disney Company Limited. So, bila you company limited, you know that it's a non-resident person. Alright, paid, make payment of royalty in 2019. Amounting to 9,000 tickets je. But fail to remit the beholding test of 1,000 on the date of submission of return form. So, maknanya apa? What is the total amount that you pay? The total royalty is actually 10,000. You only pay to the Disney 9,000, 1,000 you keep to yourself. You did not pay to RAB. So even though you withhold tax, but you did not pay to RAB, you still have the non-compliance issue. Okay. The company has claimed a deduction on gross income 10,000. So in this case, you know that the company is a non-compliant. Why? Because they tak, you, they tak remit the 1,000 to RRB and then submit the royalty as a allowable expense. When it's allowable expense means that your adjusted income wrong lah sekarang ni. Patutnya you add back 10,000, betul tak? So now your adjusted income or your chargeable income is understated by or undercharged by 10,000. 
coming back. If the royalty, right, do not comply with the holding tax, you have to add back ten thousand. But the company actually claim ten thousand ringgit, so it means that the punya tax or the chargeable income is undercharged, right, by ten thousand ringgit. So that ten thousand ringgit, that gross income claim as a deduction is ten thousand. But actually, you have to pay tax on the ten thousand because why the expense is not deductible expense. You have to add back. So when you add back, your charge income must also be add back by ten thousand. But now the under charge because why you claim the expense, right? So for that tax under charge is twenty four percent. So this is two thousand four hundred. So now because you submit incorrect returns, why is it incorrect? Because you have under charge. Income by ten thousand. Why you undercharge? Because you have claim expenses. Sepatutnya expense tu you add back, alright? Maknanya you kena bayar tax on the ten thousand. But now you claim, so now tax undercharge is ten thousand. Why is the tax on the ten thousand twenty four percent? So the tax undercharge, income undercharge is ten thousand. Tax undercharge is two thousand four hundred. Yeah, and the penalty is hundred percent of the tax undercharge. How much the tax under charge? Two thousand four. So penalty hundred percent, two thousand four lah. So total ni you have four thousand eight hundred. And remember, you still have the penalty ten percent non compliance. How much is the penalty? Ten percent of what? Ten percent of the one thousand, which is hundred. Roy, penalty ni dah bayar ke belum? Belum. You have not read my remit the one thousand to R B. So total lah four thousand eight plus one thousand. Plus one hundred. So total you have to pay. How much is that? Five thousand nine hundred. So additional tax of five thousand, not tax lah. Amount due to the government is four thousand eight hundred plus one thousand one hundred. So you have to pay to RB, right? And in this case, remember tax return have been submitted, and the tax submitted, the return submitted is incorrect return. That's why you get the penalty macam ni. But if you have paid earlier, all right, before you submit, you pay how much you have to pay? You only have to pay one thousand one hundred. But now you have to pay five thousand nine hundred, right? Additional of four thousand eight because why? You are not aware of the tax. So, uh, me, yeah. So for that, you have to pay additional tax in unnecessary. So remember that this is a cost to the government company, yeah. So you have to pay additional cost. Why? Because you have not actually followed the Tax regulation, okay. So if you look at the changes in tax law, previously penalty is always ten percent, right? But the incorrect returns prior to two thousand eleven is no. There's no penalty for incorrect return. But in two uh, from first uh, January two thousand eleven, the penalty is forty five percent only. So instead of you pay two thousand four hundred penalty, right? You have to pay two thousand five percent of the two thousand four hundred only. Previously. But from two thousand eighteen, all right, the penalty for incorrect returns now increased to hundred percent, right? Because remember that, uh, it's a very important because loss of revenue to the government now if you do not comply with this, yeah. I remember that the payment to expatriate, payment to non resident is not cheap, right? So if you do not comply, then it's a lot of government loss lah, revenue loss by the government, right? Because why you do not comply? I remember who has to be. Because the responsibility on the payer, if you do not comply, the penalty is on the payer, right? So why you have to pay more, right? Where actually, it's not your, it shouldn't be part of your business expenses, yeah? Right? Penalty apply to uh, contract payment, special class of income, royalty, and casual income. Okay. Uh, I think that I have to stop now. Four twenty six already. Eh, hari ni kan berapa pa? Three, four, oh, ada lagi habis nama lah. Ini dah nak habis dah. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, okay, any question on the incorrect returns and non-compliance? Is that clear? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay, now we talk about the exemption. Exemption means that it may fall into the scope, all right. Scope of income is royalty, all right, and it's derived in Malaysia. But there's an exemption. 
exemption mean that uh, the royalty is, for example, in this case, royalty income lah, is completely exempted from your income where the royalty are approved by the Ministry of Finance. So if the payment of royalty is approved by MOF, right, then there's no such thing as withholding tax. Lah. You don't have to pay. It's exempted from WHT. Right? Uh, or it could be an approved industrial royalty. Right? Uh, double tax agreement. So later we look into this double tax agreement punya topic. Uh, such a such a Malaysia Australia approved industrial royalty shall be exempted from tax, right? Uh, here it means that approved and certified by the competent authority of Malaysia, in this case Ministry of Finance, for the purpose of promoting industrial development in Malaysia, payable by enterprise which is engaged in activity in the sector of manufacturing, assembling, and processing, construction, civil engineering, or shipbuilding, or electricity, hydraulic powers, gas, or water supply. So if you fall into the exemption, then you don't have to withhold tax. Lah, right? But of course, in your exam, normally there's no such thing as exemption. I give you a topic on withholding tax, definitely you have to pay. Right? Definitely it's subject to withholding tax. Most likely. Lah, yeah? okay. Example here, uh, Environment Chemical is a Malaysian resident company, has a branch in China, manufacturing chemicals. Under a royalty agreement with Technology Limited of the UK, the branch in China is required to pay Technology Limited a royalty of 4% on its net annual sale. Total royalty charge out in the branch accounts is 300,000. Determine whether the royalty received by Technology Limited is derived from Malaysia and explain the treatment. Okay. In this case, remember, the, the amount 300,000 is received by Technology Limited under royalty agreement Technology Limited of the UK the branch in China is required to pay Technology Limited 4% which is 300,000 whether the royalty received by Technology Limited is derived from Malaysia so you have to look at this Environment Chemical Cinema is a Malaysian resident company right? and it has a branch in China right? branch in China then that uh, the technology limited make uh, sorry branch in China make payment to technology limited in UK. So payment now the issue here is that in UK here is a non-resident. Okay, non-resident lah. Yeah, eh. tak jadi lah. Okay, non-resident. So the issue here is that do you have to withhold tax on the payment to UK? Payment to UK of 300,000 by branch in China. Branch in China is actually the parent company is Environment Chemicals Neighborhood. Okay. So the royalty received by Technology Limited is derived from Malaysia because it is payable by a person who is tax resident. So you're looking at here. This one is a resident. Right. A foreign branch would follow the resident status of the head office. So, kalau Malaysian here is a resident, branch in China is also a Malaysian resident company. So, uh, in this case, derivation is payment, payer is a Malaysian resident company paid to a non-resident person, the royalty payment. So, because of that, all right, the China branch would be accorded Malaysia residents. The fact royalty is not charged and expense against is not relevant. Because they tell you all, all, all. Right? If you fulfill any one of that, then right, it, it falls into the uh, derivation, deemed derived, right? Uh, ECSB will have to deduct 10% of holding tax on the royalty within one month of paying or creating to technology and account to the tax authorities. Okay, so that is on royalty. So you have covered uh, the definition, the tax rate, right? And then issue of non compliance. Non compliance, all right, the tax, uh, the rate penalty is 10% of the. Uh, we holding tax or the amount due, okay, and you also have the issue of incorrect return. So all these will apply the same if you have non-compliance and the interest and the special uh, other income, yeah, which is subject to be holding tax. So that one you have to hold very, uh, you really have to understand that very clear, lah, yeah, okay. The second type of income here, we're talking about, not second, third, yeah, tadi kita buat contract payment, royalty, and now we have the interest. Okay. 
interest is interesting. Okay, remember that interest to the recipient, to the non-resident person, you receive interest because any idea? For example, you're talking about the payment, and the payment of interest expense. Why you make payment of the interest expense? Because you take loan from the non-resident person. Right? When you take up loan for a non-resident person, you have to pay interest on the loan. In other words, interest is what? Riba. Lah. Betul tak? Right, you bagi loan and then ada interest on the loan, then the interest is actually riba lah. Right? But okay, looking at that, that's conventional, right? Assuming that there is a payment of interest in the company, right? Payment of interest to a person who is a non-resident person. So interest is fall under the scope of your holding tax. But is the interest derived in Malaysia, you have to check the derivation. Do you get that? Right. Payment to non-resident person interest, check the not the resident, the gym derivation. Okay. Uh compensation for delayed payment, right? <clears throat> the time for the use of money, there must be a sum of money known as the principal, and this time must be due to the person who is entitled to or receive the interest. Okay. Look at the derivation, right? It's a bit different from your royalty income and contract payment. Interest income is derived from Malaysia. By whom? Siapa yang terima interest income? Who actually receive the interest income? Non-resident. Non-resident person, yeah? Okay. Non-resident person is deemed to receive the interest income, all right, derived in Malaysia if, number one, if the responsibility lies with the government, state government or local authority. So the same. Sama kan? Right? The, the, the responsibility of payment lies with government, state government or local or. Ada or. B. Responsibility for payment uh, lies with a person who is a resident. Right? Sama. But you are the end kat sini. Bila you are the end, it means that you have to fulfill both conditions. Not only you must be a resident person, but it must also, the amount is payable in respect of money borrowed by that person and employed in or laid out on asset. You employ, okay, you, you borrow money from the non-resident person and the money you use in the business or on an asset and that asset is used in or help for production of income of that person from uh, from Malaysia. Right? Masa ni lah bateri nak kong. Baik dekat. Okay. Alright. So means that not only the person must be a resident, but the money borrowed is used in business. Or purchase an asset, asset used in the production of income in Malaysia. Alright, or in debt, uh, the debt in respect of which the interest is paid is secured by any property or asset situated in Malaysia. It means that, alright, you borrow the money, right, but you, uh, because uh, as a guarantee, you must have some kind of asset to secure the loan, right? So in that case, if it's secured by any property or asset in Malaysia, then the interest is deemed to be derived in Malaysia. Right? So for this part B, you are the two condition lah. Right? Not only you must be a resident, but the money borrowed must be used in the business in Malaysia or used to purchase an asset, an asset used in the production of income or the debt, or right, the money that you borrowed, right, is secured against uh, any property or asset in Malaysia. So you have to fulfill any of this. Lah. Then only the, in, the interest is deemed derived in Malaysia. If the interest is charged as an outgoing, so ni kat sini all, yeah? So means that it's either A, B or C. 
Cuma B tu you kena kuat sikit lah Alright Or uh, injury is charged and outgoing or expense against any income is put in or derived from Malaysia Unlike royalty, payment by resident person is sufficient to deem such royalty In order for interest income to be deemed derived The reason for such, you know, the reason for such borrowing is crucial Beside being paid by resident person Such reason can be categorized as follow Payment, okay, ni is actually for the part B Yeah Dia summarizekan part B Payment by resident person and Money borrowed employed in business Or money borrowed used on asset And the asset is used or held For the production of Malaysian derived income Alright, or Kat number two, you say that the debt is secured by property or asset situated in Malaysia. Alright, uh, do you understand this? Very important, yeah? Very important for you to understand the derivation of interest income in Malaysia. Alright, uh, deduction of your instead is the same. In this case, remember interest is 15%. So it means that you have to withhold 15% and you only pay to non-resident person. The balance 85% and the amount we hold must be paid to IRB within 30 days. Okay. Uh, this is the example. You can look into the example. Penalty for non-compliance is the same, 10%. Right. And now we go to the next type of income, which is public entertainers. I remember I mentioned that you must remember what is the definition. Not remember lah. You must understand the definition of the Income, right? So let's look at the public entertainers. Who are public entertainers? All right, public entertainers include. I don't know how is this a compare? What is it a compare? Compare here. All right, model. Circus performer. Lecturer, right? Believe it or not, I'm a public entertainer. Are you entertained by my lecture? Yes, madam. Yes, madam. I do like it. <laughs> uh, I'm a public entertainer. That's why. That's my my role, all right, to entertain you all. So, assuming that I'm a non-resident person, uh, let's say that uh, I'm from Japan. I'm from... Must be in Malaysia juga lah. Okay. Uh, assuming that I'm a Singaporean. Right, a non-resident person and then I give lecture to you and then the payment is a, as a lecturer is a public entertainer. So I will not get the whole amount. Okay, I will only receive uh, public entertainer apa? 10% kan? Yeah? So I will only receive 90% payment. Right? Uh, and this one will also be the same. For example, I'm from Malaysia. Katalah Singapore, alright, have the same beholding tax provision. They kata, okay, lecturer 15% we holding tax. So, if I were to lecture in Singapore, payment to me, I will only receive 85% of that. Why? Because we holding tax of 15%. Yeah. So, remember that. Alright. And then you have speaker, sports person, artist, individual assessing any profession, vocation, employment or similar nature or an individual who use intellectual, artistic, musical, personal, physical skill or character in carrying out any activity in connection with the purpose of life, through life, print, electronic. So, I have YouTube memang kena lah. Right? Cable, fiber optic or other medium. For film or tape, for TV or radio broadcast, as the case may be, the definition takes effect from 2017. Before this lecture, tak masuk. Lecture was not there. Alright, but now because they know that okay, lecturer can can always give now boleh bagi online YouTube everything. Alright, now they charge. This kind is really so far tak dila, tak dila lagi. You all tak subscribe, you nak ada pakai lah pada YouTube. Okay, RFB issue uh, need to govern withholding tax on income of a non-resident person. Previous ni nampak before 2017, you know, public entertainer is stage, radio, TV, artist, musician, athlete. Individual exercise and professional occasion. Tak ada. Lecturer tak ada. But now you look at the the, the definition. A and B some more you know. Kalau dulu maybe B only. Now A and B. So means that they are widening the definition. When you widen the definition of public entertainer. Means that many more people will fall into the category. So bila many more people fall into the category of a public entertainer. Then our, the inland reward can collect more tax. 
So that's why we say that widening the tax base, right? Tax base so means that many more people fall into the category than you have to pay tax, right? It's good for the government, lah, not good for the taxpayer. Okay. Uh, revenue should be paid to a non resident public entertainer. Mm -hmm. Our service performed or rendered in Malaysia will attract rolling tax. Section 4A as a business income or employment income. So in my case, it's employment income. Still subject to the holding tax. A public entertainer's remission include benefit in kind as this would form part of the fees paid to the public entertainer. So we're talking about as a lecturer, maybe for example, uh, my accommodation provided by the company, uh, by the, the country, right, for example. So all this will be subject to uh, holding tax. Huh? The, the bigger the amount means that the more that tax will be deducted from my income. Right? Derivation, right, is the same. Uh, uh, because remember that, so in this case, is the employment income, right? It could be employment, it could be this income. So that's why the derivation is that uh, Jewish employment is exercised in Malaysia. Means that no resident come to Malaysia, or uh, then exercise. For example, give lecture in Malaysia, right? From uh, maybe from China, for example, right? China bagi lecture from Malaysia. From Australia, come to Malaysia to give talk, right, or lecture. Uh, for any period leave attributable to exercise employment in Malaysia and any period during which employee perform outside Malaysia, which duties incidental to the exercise employment in Malaysia. For example, uh, in this case, uh, I may be invited to go to give my lecture in Indonesia, for example, right? And then the Indonesia will pay me as a non resident person. So that payment is also sub even though it's outside Malaysia, but the the job or is performed incidental to my job in Malaysia. You get that? So because of that, it will also fall under this income derivation, right? In a deduction of your in tax, other section. Okay, this section one oh nine. All right, dear Sini, one oh nine is the section that is, um. The charging section for withholding tax. Okay. For example, just now, interest income section 15, yen. right? Interest income is section 15. Let me see. All right. Section 15. Section 15 means like interest income. But the, in, uh, the, the withholding tax portion, though, all right, the, the section that imposes withholding tax is section. What is it? I rasa 1 O. Mana dia? Derivation. Tak ada lah pula. Section 15. Let me see. Tak ada pula. I say 1 O 9 juga kot. Alright. Public entertainers here it says that uh, 1 O 9 A. Okay. We are holding that deduction. Tak ada. Tak ada. Bawah. Kat bawah mana? Kat sama ayat tu. Mana? Yang kat deduction below the tax. Ni. Tak yang kat yang public entertainment tu. Saya jumpa 109A yang nak kira interest. Tak, dia ada kat situ tak? Satu, satu, satu ayat. Ini 109 derivation tadi. Penat ah, ha? cari kat situ ah ha? nampak. Ini 109. Public entertainers 109A. Bila ada A tu, dia ada amendment kat situ. Right? Means that dia the new law that comes in lah. Under section 109. Okay? It's 15%. The new and expanded scope of public entertainer, right? Tengok ni. Embark in whatever manner. Lecturer, speaker. Ha, tengok tu. Saja je kan? Penalty for non-compliance is the same. Okay. Special classes of income. This one, actually you, you found the very beginning on page page 1 of your textbook. Kat bawah sekali, income of a non-resident person. Section 4, big A. Right? So, the there dia kata, income of a non-resident person. So, means that whenever a non-resident person receive the following income, 1, 2, 3. Right? Mana 1, 2, 3? 1, 2, and 3. So, benda ni you dah jumpa dekat page 2 in your Textbook. Right? Kita panggil income, special classes of income or section 4 big, 4 big A. What are the income received by the non-resident? Among paid in consideration of services rendered by the person or his employee. 
in connection with the use of property or rights belonging to or the installation or operation of any plant, machine or other apparatus purchased from such person. So let me say an like example, lah, right? You buy a machine from Korea. Okay, you buy a machine from Korea, but the machine costs you 100,000. But in order for you to operate the machine, you need to pay for another person from Korea, right? That person need to install or need to operate the machine because maybe you just bought the machine, you don't know how to use it, then you have to pay that person, the Korean, who is a non-resident person. Right, you have to pay him to install or to operate the machine. Right, so that payment maybe ten thousand ringgit, maybe. So machine is hundred thousand. Ten thousand is for the person, and the person is a non-resident person, lah. So because of that, alright, section four A, the ten percent, the ten thousand ringgit paid to the non-resident person for the purpose of installation or operation of the machine is subject to different tax. You get that? A monthly inclusion of any advice given, assistance or service rendered in connection with the management or administration of any scientific, industrial or commercial undertaking, venture project or scheme. So this one normal. You pay for the advice, you pay for the technical fee, all right? All this for under section 4BA. And remember the payment made to a non-resident person. Then means that the income subject, because why special class of income? Or rental or other payment made under agreement for the use of any movable property. Movable property, you boleh bayangkan movable property ni. Rental tau, rental of movable property. Can you imagine what is a movable property? Car. Huh? What is movable? Example. Car. Motor vehicle. Alright, boleh motor vehicle? Yeah. So mean that, kalau kata motor vehicle, motor vehicle ni is owned by the non-resident person. So you rental, you rent the motor vehicle from a non-resident person. Right? So kalau kat Malaysia ni, yang cakap pasal uh, motor vehicle ni, not, normally non-resident ni is not that payment for the normal motor vehicle person ke kah. Most of the time, alright, the movable property ni, the truck for example. Right, the very big crane ke benda tu, ah, that is movable property. And the payment is made to a non-resident person. Uh, ada satu lagi case law is the vessel. Right? Malaysian company rented or pay lease rental for a vessel. Vessel ni macam ship lah, small ship. Yeah? Pay to a, a Singaporean company that owns the vessel. So in this case, payment to the Singaporean who is a non-resident person. Pay for what? For the rental of the movable property. For that, then subject to withholding tax. Okay, right? Okay, derived in Malaysia uh, and then scope of services. Uh, tadi kita kat uh, section 4A1 ni, ni lah dia cakap pasal services ya. Eh? Services rendered. Right, it's not on the machine, it's on the services rendered. Right, scope dia termasuk lah use of property or rights or installation or operation or any plan. Includes provision of personnel or advisory or supervisory services related to A and B. Okay, and section 4A2, and then dia cakap lagi lah. Right, uh, these include admin service such as routine in nature, call center service, human resource, staff training, accounting, financial management, all these things, if you uh, pay to a non-resident person for their advice, for example, for their consultancy services, and then you have to withhold tax, yeah. The deletion of the word technical would effectively mean that the issue of technical and non-technical in nature would be irrelevant. Right, last time kata technical je. So kalau non-technical tak apa. So now when they remove the technical, so the base is wider lah. Because it includes technical and non-technical. Pandai kan government. Okay and 4.3 is that it says that, uh, see, nampak. Include oil rigs. Sekarang ni remember kan kita ada Malaysia kan dia ada macam uh, the ship yang move around. Bukan ship lah. Dia plant tau, oil plant on a ship. Apa dia panggil? Petroleum, pet, Petronas ada benda kita orang. Right, so dia move around lah. Dulu dia dekat sini, tapi maknanya that one, rather than they have, they build a rig, right, <coughs> uh, out 
outside the shore Wah, ibu tak faham dah term kan So sekarang ni dia buat benda tu as a sheep So dia move around dengan tu Bila dia pergi tu, okay dia stop at one place And then they will just rig, uh, dig all the oil for example Alright, then finish, move to another place lah Alright, then do some more digging Okay, voice charter So apply lah, also apply to aircraft Alright Katalah you ada small uh, aircraft company but you do not you do not own the aircraft the aircraft you lease rental from another company and that company is a non Malaysian or non resident yeah so then you have to repo the whole time okay so example here you think I'm a lease rental of plant 230 so lease rental of plant machine ni kena ada 30, uh, part 3 tadi lah right training right then all this is 10% lah DJ is providing specific attention to the lease rental with the MB4A3, the training is 4A2. So both payment is subject to withholding tax. Derivation same, government, state government, resident and the, time, the third one is outgoing expense. Okay, uh, penat lah, penat, penat. Okay, nak habis dah, habis dah. Penalty sama je. Okay, capex. Okay, other income section 4F lah. Any other income which may fall into section 4F, right? Uh, sometimes RB kata, okay, it doesn't fall to A, B, C, D, E, fall to F. But you have to fight lah as a taxpayer, we have to fight lah. Income is not taxable. RB, we also say, hey, tax income is taxable. So you have to pay tax. So you have to fight with RB lah. Right? And then the derivation is still the same. Right? And then we have uh, contract payment tadi ada mention 10% on the company, 2% on the employees. Then you look at the definition here. What else we have here? Penalty for incorrect return is the same. 3% is on the non-resident employees. Right? <coughs> RIB practice. Okay. Tax planning. Okay. Uh, let's just see into this one. This is the last page, okay? Tax planning. Splitting of contract. Talking about contract payment dulu. Right, in cases where the contract comprise an offshore element, for example, design and drawing work in relation to the project is done outside Malaysia, while installation or supervisory activity are to be carried out in Malaysia, payment should be distinguished between the offshore and onshore elements. Right, the respective payment could be captured under separate contracts, while proper planning, offshore will be 10 plus 3, and the onshore, section 4A, would not apply to such service performed outside Malaysia effective from 2003. So, maknanya you pay tax only on the onshore. So, if you have separate contract, then you can reduce your tax liability. But again, for you to advise on this, you must have enough experience and you really have to understand the tax law. Alright? So, I've taken five minutes of your time. I think that we have covered your withholding tax today. Right? I'm losing my voice already. Thank you for your attention. I hope that you will look into the tax book. Do not on this topic, right? Because definitely it will be in your final exam. Okay, your midterm is on the. Bila midterm? Ah, I not stop that. Stop recording.